Over the years, our favorite Marvel heroes have made us laugh, cheer, and even cry. We've shared some deeply emotional moments with the characters of the MCU, and today, we're gonna be talking about the times they had us trying to explain that our tears are due to allergies, okay? Stop it. Get ready for some of the most heartfelt and heartbreaking scenes in the entirety of the MCU. But before we get into these depressingly sad moments, yeah, make sure you have some tissues ready. Also, subscribe to CBR and ring that bell to join our notification squad so you never miss any of our MCU videos. Tragedies of Asgard Remember way back when, when the first Thor movie came out, and our titular hero thought of pretty much nothing other than drinking and fighting? Ah, times haven't been so simple for the God of Thunder since then, and he's experienced unimaginable losses. During Thor The Dark World, we saw the loss of his mother, Frigga, which was so devastating even Loki could barely keep himself together. In Thor Ragnarok, we watched Thor lose his beloved father Odin, and then grapple with the fact that Odin wasn't who he thought he was. Odin had a secret daughter named Hela, and the two had delighted in conquering together. Throughout all of this, Thor at least had his brother Loki by his side. Uh-huh. These two siblings have always had a complicated relationship filled with power struggles and strife, but it's always been clear that they care about one another deep down. During Thor Ragnarok, it seemed Loki was finally willing to work on their relationship, even risking his life to save Thor and the Asgardians. This made his death during Avengers Infinity War all the more tragic. He stepped in to save Thor and ended up being strangled by Thanos as a result. This was tragic enough, but the loss devastated Thor, who later remarked that he had nothing left to lose at this point. Rocket's got stuff to lose, though. That's for sure. Peter Parker It's safe to say many of us were apprehensive when we heard there would be another Spider-Man movie hitting theaters, but Spider-Man Homecoming was a fantastic movie that managed to hit us comic book fans with a pretty hearty dose of nostalgia. Tom Holland played the adorably precocious teenage Peter Parker, and we watched him struggle to make it as a superhero. He was willing to tear himself apart in desperation to save a ferry full of passengers, and desperately hoped to make a difference. Parker sacrificed so many normal teenage experiences in order to become Spider-Man, despite the lack of support from the adults in his life. In fact, his hero, Tony Stark, basically told him he was disappointed in him, which was understandably devastating. But even after having his high-tech suit taken away, Peter Parker wouldn't stop fighting for what was right. He went after the vulture in his best pair of sweats and later ended up the victim of a building collapse. Although the scene was short, it was unbearably sad to watch a young Peter Parker screaming for help while trapped under the rubble. Making it worse was the fact that, for all intents and purposes, he was utterly alone in that desperate moment. It was a somber reminder that being a superhero means risking your life, and it's a sad fact that heroes don't always win. We are Groot. Guardians of the Galaxy was a great movie, filled with tons of laughs and an awesome soundtrack, but this doesn't mean it didn't have its fair share of especially poignant moments for a character who could only say, I am Groot. Groot became a fan favorite and was shown to have a gentle heart compared to the other Guardians of the Galaxy. When the Dark Aster was going down, it seemed as though their time together was rapidly coming to an end, but Groot stepped in to save the day. He shielded his friends, protecting them from the devastating crash at the expense of his own safety. In his last moments, he uttered the words, We are. Uh, Groot. According to the actress Zoe Saldana, that scene was an emotional moment for the cast and crew of the movie. She claims there wasn't a dry eye in the house as everyone was moved by the unconditional spirit of Groot. Of course, in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, we were introduced to the adorable baby Groot, but this doesn't diminish his sacrifice. The new Groot is an offspring of the old Groot, who is sadly gone for good. According to director James Gunn, baby Groot doesn't retain the memories of Groot. Only time will tell what sort of being he grows up to be. Bring back James Gunn! The ancient one. During Doctor Strange, we were introduced to a mystical character known as the Ancient One. From the beginning, she was as calm and poised as Stephen Strange was brash and arrogant. She had lived an unimaginably long life and had seen a great deal of pain and strife during that time. During her fight with her protege Cassilius, it's revealed that she was able to extend her life by drawing power from the insidious Dark Dimension. That was a big reveal which changed the way her friend Mordo felt about her forever. Cassilius managed to deliver a killing blow and the Ancient One reverts to her astral form to savor the last few moments of her life. She confesses to Doctor Strange that she doesn't know if all of her choices have been morally sound, but she had always acted with the best of intentions. That she had been alive for thousands of years, but she still felt fear at the thought of passing away. Seeing such an ancient and powerful being scared in the face of death was profoundly touching. As she desperately tried to savor her last moments of life, she was forced to contend herself with the thought that she had done all she could in order to make a better future during her time on this planet. Spidey Sense We said goodbye to way too many of our beloved characters during Avengers in Infinity War. I told you before, it's allergies. Of course, who could forget the instant Thanos snapped his fingers and half of life in the universe disappeared. 
While watching some of our favorite characters fade into oblivion was heartbreaking, one of them in particular had a striking impact on audiences. The relationship between Peter Parker and Tony Stark is one of our favorites in all of the MCU. It's been heartwarming to watch the notoriously curmudgingly Stark take Parker under his wing. It's clear that Parker wants desperately to impress Stark and views him as a father figure. Uncle Ben who? In the beginning of Infinity War, Tony Stark recalled a dream he had in which he imagined having a son. Although Pepper Potts assured him it was just a dream, we think his dream might have actually been a manifestation of his paternal feelings towards the young Peter Parker. But in the end, Tony Stark was unable to protect someone he loves. In his last moments, Parker looked at him pleadingly for help, and Stark could only sit by, completely helpless as he disappeared into dust. It was clear that Parker spent his last moments alive absolutely terrified, and it was devastating to watch, both as a member of the audience and as Tony Stark himself. The Truth Everyone knows that Tony Stark is brilliant to the point of arrogance, and he's not exactly a warm and fuzzy kind of guy, but we do know he puts a lot of pressure on himself, and he's capable of caring deeply for other people from time to time. Unsurprisingly, Tony Stark had a complicated relationship with his parents, particularly his father. Their time together was fraught with tension, but sadly, they never had time to patch things up. Tony knew his parents were killed long ago, but during Captain America's Civil War, he came face to face with the man responsible. When confronted by Tony Stark and Steve Rogers, Zemo shows the footage revealing what really happened to the Starks. Bucky Barnes had been the one who intercepted their car, looking for their super soldier serum inside. He was responsible for killing Stark's parents, which was devastating enough. But the situation, yeah, it got worse. Tony Stark realized that the man he believed to be his friend, Captain America, had known about this and kept it a secret from him. It was a huge betrayal, and one which caused Stark to lash out at Bucky Barnes and Captain America. Losing his parents was a terrible tragedy, and the tragedy was compounded when it caused him to lose a friend as well. Family Tragedy The movie Black Panther introduced so many great characters and then got rid of about half of them. Seriously, Killmonger flew into our lives like a villainous shooting star and he was gone before we knew it. When we first saw him on the screen, it was clear he would stop at nothing to achieve his goals and wasn't shy about resorting to violence. But his goal was much more than simply conquering Wakanda for his own personal gain. He wanted to use the resources of Wakanda to help people living elsewhere. Finding out that Killmonger was T'Challa's cousin added a whole new dimension to the character, and we had to witness the heartbreaking scene where a young Killmonger found his deceased father, Jinobu, after he was killed by T'Chaka. There was definitely a lot of complex emotions for everyone to deal with here. T'Challa had to come to terms with the fact that the father he had admired had killed his own brother and abandoned his nephew in poverty. At the end, Killmonger lay defeated, and T'Challa offered him medical help, but Killmonger gave his now infamous and tragic parting line, bury me in the ocean with my ancestors that jumped from the ships because they knew death was better than bondage. It was a heartbreaking end for a great character who had a tragic life and some valid points about the current situation in Wakanda. Orphaned Right off the bat, the first few moments of Guardians of the Galaxy was pretty heartbreaking. We saw the mother of a young Peter Quill perish from cancer, an event which would impact him for the rest of his life. Later, we saw Quill risk his life for the cassette tapes his mother gave him and listen to them with tears in his eyes. Growing up, Quill would dream about a father he never had the opportunity to know. And in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, he finally got the chance to meet his father, Ego. Learning your father is an ultra-powerful celestial is pretty awesome, but much less awesome was the revelation which came next. Ego revealed that he had been trying to sire an offspring who could help him with his rise to power. He had grown too close to Quill's mother, so he had put a lethal tumor in her brain. Not only did Star-Lord learn his father had killed his beloved mother, but stopping him was his responsibility now. Although his biological father turned out to be a monster, Star-Lord realized that Yondu had been a father figure to him all along. The two were able to share a touching reconnection, and Yondu acknowledged his feelings for Star-Lord before he too sadly perished. Okay, I, I'm running out of tissues here. I, I don't know. I had a date. For most of us Marvel fans, getting superpowers seems like it would be a dream come true. But us Marvel fans also know with great power comes great responsibility. And most of the time, it seems like becoming a superhero requires some sort of horrible tragedy, which we saw in Captain America the First Avenger. Steve Rogers volunteered to receive an injection of super serum with the hope of fighting for his country during World War II. It was a bold move which could have gone horribly wrong. Just look at Red Skull. The serum imbued Steve Rogers with super strength and stamina transforming him into Captain America, the powerful poster child for patriotism. Looking good, Cap! But when his plane crashed into the Arctic, Captain America ended up frozen in ice for over 70 years. He survived his ordeal, but has to live on with the knowledge that many people he knew and lived had perished, and the world was now a completely different place. In his old life, he had a date with the beautiful Peggy Carter, and the exact moment when he realized that that time had long passed was heartbreaking. While he's taking in everything that happened, Nick Fury asks him if he'll be alright, to which Rogers replied, I had a date. Vision loss. 
Pretty much from the start of Avengers Infinity War, we were desperately worried about Vision. While other people may have possessed Infinity Stones, the Mind Stone was an integral part of Vision himself. Removing it could very well destroy his personality completely, a fact that our heroes were quick to comprehend. Almost immediately, Vision was willing to sacrifice himself, but his love for Wanda Maximoff refused to give up. They traveled to Wakanda with the hope that Shuri could remove the Mind Stone from Vision while keeping his memories and personality intact. Whether or not she had time to back up his personality before the moment is something we can speculate speculate on later. But eventually, Vision knew he couldn't escape Thanos. He had to plead with Wanda to use her powers to destroy the Mind Stone so it wouldn't fall into the hands of Thanos. Poor Wanda had to destroy the person she loved more than anyone, and the most gut-wrenching part was that it didn't end up making a difference. Thanos simply moved the clock back a few moments, destroyed Vision himself, and grabbed the Mind Stone. This was truly one of the most tragic and hopeless moments in the entire movie, and that's saying a lot. We can only hope the sacrifices made by Wanda and Vision will come into play during Avengers 4. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I'm okay. Those were some of the most heartbreaking MCU scenes thus far. Which moments made you reach for some tissues? Are there any we may have missed? Let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to subscribe to CBR for more MCU videos like this one. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Thanks for watching.